So we're going to start by going into workbench. Now ANSYS has two fluid uh, CFD modeling programs now. They used to just have CFX, which was their own basically made program. They developed it in-house. Fluent, they purchased. Fluent was a standalone. Uh, wasn't under really under anybody else. Uh, they bought it about, uh, I want to say, seven to ten years ago. And um, so it doesn't quite have the same look as what we've done with mechanical when we did all the stress analysis. But it's still under the um, under the ANSYS heading now. So we're going to drag that in, and that's going to be our project. And so you can right-click on geometry and import geometry, and if it shows up here, great. Otherwise, you just browse. All right, so that should give you a green check there right off. And the, uh, the whole green icon on the probe, if, if you have it in looking the folder on your computer, that's because it was uh, drawn or at least ended up in the uh, using ANSYS' design modeler, uh, which is fine. We're going to see it here in a little bit because we're going to go into mesh. So you can either double click on mesh or right click and edit. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to apply the mesh um, to it by itself. So this is one thing, again, that SOLIDWORKS put out kind of has all in its same package. It has the meshing in its within itself, has the solver within itself, has the post-processor within itself, and with ANSYS it's all in specific programs. And there's programs, if you ever go through the Mechanical Engineering Magazine, if you have a subscription to it or look at it up on the um, coffee table in the, in the offices, flip through there and you'll find a program, I believe it's Pointwise, uh, and there's others too, and all they do is meshing. All they do, all their focus is, is giving you the tools to mesh your domain. All right? And then there's other ones that just do post-processing, such as uh, TechPlot. All they do is they take the results from, from programs like Fluent, and they post-process it so you can look at the nice little lines and see how the fluid's flowing. And then Fluent itself is really just a solver. All right? So you have all these distinct things that uh, are filled, the roles are filled. All right, so as I said before, if anything we're modeling, we need to mesh. So we want to mesh where the fluid is going to be. So we want to mesh this part out here. We want to mesh this area in here. But this other part, right, that's kind of modeled as green on our part here, that's going to be the material. We actually do not want to mesh that. We actually want to suppress that so we don't worry about getting that as part of the model. All right, so what we'll do is we'll come under geometry here. We'll expand the geometry menu. And you can see if it's already broken into fluid, all right, and solid. And the solid being the green part. So we're going to right-click on solid, and we'll suppress the body there. Help, help, I'm being repressed. All right, so that's gone there. Um, and now let's look at the, uh, under the meshing category. Um, do you see down here? You see the solver preference? Oh, sorry, let me just get that so you can see it there. Under solver preference? Right, you can see Fluent there, that's what we're going to be using, but you also have CFX, which I talked about, and ANSYS also makes one called Polyflow, uh, which we're not going to be dealing with here. So what it basically does is it sets up the mesh in accordance with what those programs would like to see. All right, but once we get into Fluent, it's going to be really helpful if we have uh, some of the services and different parts of our model labeled in such a way that we can easily pick them out and apply our boundary conditions. So that's what we're going to do now. So if we uh, change our axis and see over here, I can click on my triad here. So here's the positive X. Let me go here to the negative X and just click on that so it quick spins around on that face. Go ahead and click on that face so it turns green. All right. So right click on that. And then it's hard to, I can't change the position of this menu all the way at the bottom or second from the bottom. It says create name selection. If you right click on that face, all the Second from the bottom is create name selection. So click on that, I'll pop this up. And that's going to be our inlet. So we'll go ahead and call that uh, velocity inlet. So we're actually going to apply a velocity boundary con condition there in a little bit. Go ahead and click OK. So that was the inlet. So let's go to the other end. Let's go to the other end and get, uh, we're going to put the 
pressure outlet. So now I get up to the uh, opposite end, click, right click, create name selection, pressure outlet. And I'm going to click OK. And let's go to the uh, positive Z side. So click it on the positive Z of our tray out here. All right, we're going to click on the face. And also want to make sure we get this area in here where the uh, fluids can flow through our probe. And if I just click there, you see it can only click one or the other, so I have to hold down a control so I can get both faces there, both surfaces. Right click again, name selection. Call this just symmetry. And OK. And then one more if we go back to our isometric view, and we can click on that surface that's on kind of the back side in the isometric view. And again, right click, name selection, and we'll call that far field. And go ahead and click OK. All right, so what we're looking at here is potentially this could be a probe that would be coming down from an aircraft and measuring the velocity that uh, the aircraft's traveling at. And so for an external flow analysis, you have to put the object in the flow and then make sure that the domain where you're going to mesh is far enough away, that's why this is called far field, far enough away that any of the effects of this object being in the flow are not felt by the wall. Because if somehow the wall... Um, if the wall's too close, it's going to change what this thing would actually experience out in atmosphere where there is no walls. All right, so you have to make the wall farther enough away that it doesn't have an effect on the um, flow around the object within the flow. That's a lot of flow. All right, so you can check here on all your named selections. Over If you uh, go to your left side outline, expand <laughs> that, you should see your velocity inlet, pressure outlet, symmetry, and far field. You can click through those if you want, see them all turn red. All right, so we'll go ahead and then to our mesh. Click on the mesh and go ahead and right click, or you can see we have update and generate mesh up here. You can use either one, and we'll go ahead and generate mesh. All right, so hopefully that um, you can see the mesh there. looks pretty good. All right, did a nice little... All right, much finer in here for the smaller geometry. Pretty fine around here where it goes around the probe. Where we're going to have that high pressure gradient as it hits it. All right, so it's, this is all saved automatically within um, ANSYS, so we don't have to do any saving here. Uh, let's do actually one more thing. We'll do update here. Let's make sure we get all the stuff saved appropriately. And go ahead and close. All right, so again, we should come back here. If we don't have a green check, we got problems. We have to come back and fix that. It looks like we should be all right. Let's go ahead and save this project if you'd like. So I'll save this project as basic underscore probe underscore fluent. Again, it doesn't really matter what it is, it's as long as you save it as something. All right, now we'll go to Setup. Setup's looking for some information, so we'll double-click there. All right, this is getting ready for the fluid launcher, and we're just going to go with the default settings there. Click OK. <clears throat> All right, so we'll go ahead with what we have here for the um, default settings here. Obviously, you can see how you can change things, different types of solvers. Instead of pressure-based, you go to density. Uh, you can go to a transient solver versus steady. Um, again, there's going to be a lot more control you have here in Fluent than you would in SolidWorks simulation. We're going to go down here to models, and we're going to be looking at uh, the viscous laminar model. We're not really concerned about these other things, but again, you can see all the different things you have, lathe, there's acoustics. But we're going to have it turned off. All right, so if you go here to viscous laminar and click on edit, again, see all the different models that you could possibly have. So there's an inviscid model. Right? You guys should know about that. Laminar model. 
Uh, I'm not actually familiar with Spilart Amaris. Uh, K epsilon and K omega, those are two different types of models that involve turbulence. K, K epsilon is uh, much, probably the most popular one, and that's the one we're going to use. Uh, but then you can see all the di other different models that are available here. All right, so just click on K epsilon. Again, leave all the default values as they are, and click OK. Uh, won't have to worry about materials here because I think it obviously starts out with air, and that's fine. Uh, I'll go to boundary conditions, all right? So you can see all the different uh, zones. These are the stuff we labeled, right? We labeled the uh, velocity inlet. We had the pressure outlet. We had the far field. We didn't actually apply any boundary conditions to them. But check out the velocity inlet. If we look at what kind of type of inlet it is, it's a, oh my goodness, it's a velocity inlet. So because the name is so similar to what the, um, the different types that Fluent has, it kind of assumed, oh, it's called velocity inlet. I'm guessing you would like a velocity inlet there. And guess what? I do. All right, so that worked out really well. If you look at pressure outlet, hey, look, it's a pressure outlet. All right, again, there's other options here. You could have an exhaust fan, inlet vent, intake fan, et cetera, et cetera. All right, but it picked up that we wanted a pressure outlet. All right, so let's change some of those values. So we'll go to, back to velocity inlet. Click on edit. And velocity magnitude we're going to put in there is 30 meters per second. And again, so since we're dealing with turbines, we have to specify some additional information. So we'll go to intensity and length, scale, and we'll keep it at 5%, and the length is 0 0.01 meters. All right. Basically what that's doing is looking at, because the turbines is going to create, what is turbines, big thing in turbines that we're interested in? Eddies, right? So this length scale is looking at, you know, how finely should we look at those eddies and consider them as they're flowing around doing stuff. All right, so that's uh, 0.01 there. Click OK. I'll go to Pressure Outlet and Edit. All right, so this is gauge pressure. So gauge pressure means zero is atmosphere. All right, so I have to worry about that. Again, we'll change this to be the same as we had for velocity. So go to Intensity and Length Scale. And we'll go with 5 and 0 0.01. And click on OK. All right, so let's just double check here. Check our symmetry out. So symmetry shows up as symmetry. That's always a good thing. Um, and then, oh, I also want to show you the wall. Uh, so if you look at the far field, so notice that the far, wheel, far field, I call it a wall. Let's look under edit on that one. Notice the shear condition for that case. All right, no slip. So that's what we want there. We want, don't want to worry about slipping along the wall there. All right, so that's all good there. We're all set up with that. So let's come down here to um, solution initialization. And we're going to change it to, instead of hybrid, do a standard initialization and do it based on the velocity inlet. All right, so what this whole initialization thing is, is it's going to use an iterative solver. What does an iterative solver need to then solve? What's that? It needs a starting point. It needs a guess throughout the domain. So that's what this is going to do. All right, it's going to set things up with a guess about all the different things that it needs to know. And so if we go ahead and click on initialize, it's going to do that. And that's all the excitement you get from that. Go ahead and click on run. We're going to go to uh, do 100 iterations. And then go to calculate. And you can watch it bring up a plot that shows the iterations. And this is showing convergence, right? Again, the iteration is showing how much change do we have between the value we calculated the first uh, step to the next step. And we want to minimize that change. We want to see it to continue to decrease. And so that's when we watch this plot here. It's showing us that, that we're getting a certain type of convergence on each of the different residuals, right, or error that we have on these things as it's highlighting in the upper left here, continuity, velocity in the x, y, and z, uh, and k epsilon value. All right? But again, it gets to 100 iterations. It calls it quits because that's what we told it to stop at, and we click OK. All right? Everybody's worked out there OK? All right. Again, it saves it automatically. We don't have to do anything else here, so go, we go ahead and close. All right.
And so we're all greened up, green checked up till we get to results. And so we can double click on results. All right. And I got this error uh, yesterday and I kept running into it and I was just trying to figure out what's going on. Um, you may get this depending on where you saved your file at and we can fix it really easy. Um, but notice what happened here. If you ever looked in uh, at your map drive, this should be, uh, I think it's student files. Then there's a dollar sign and then there's a slash. Notice how the dollar sign and the slash is gone. Somehow it gets goofed up. I don't know how. It, it, in other places in, in ANSYS it shows it fine. But it's, it's not liking this. So you need to uh, save this on your uh, on a local drive. So go ahead and close it. It should have everything saved at this point, so you should be all right. I got to close out of this here. All right, so I'll go ahead and close this guy. All right, so go find your folder. And for mine, I did mine in my downloads folder, which is linked to my network drive. So I need to go find my files here. So I saw it, saved it as basic probe fluent. And then I also need the folder because the folder is where it saved all this, the fluent information from. So the folder is going to be the same name as my project file. So I'll come up here and, and select that as well. And I'm just going to copy and bring it over to the desktop. Actually, the desktop might even be mapped to your drive. So maybe the best thing is to do, if you go into the C drive, and under users, find your username and just paste it in there somewhere. So I did it here under probe. All right, so C, C drive users, find your username and that'll be saved in the local drive. Obviously if it's local, it's not gonna go with you to the next place, so you just have to copy it back when we're done. All right, but once you've copied to the local drive, go ahead and open up the project file. Once you've done that, you should be able to double click on your results and that should open up. All right, so again, talking about the different programs, we had a program for meshing, we had a program for solving, which was fluent, and now we have this new program for post-processing, CFD post. And so the way ANSYS works, it has a meshing program, it has two solver programs, CFX and fluent, and then it has a single post-processing program. So it doesn't have to put those all in, in Fluent and CFX and combine them all together. It just separates these things out depending on what you're trying to accomplish. All right, so let's get some plot here. We want to see some prettiness here. So come up here. You can do a contour, this little button, or go insert contour. And we'll just go with the default name, contour1. And we're going to come over here and set where it says all domains and then locations far field, go to the location editor, editor next to that. All right. And we want to locate this on the symmetry so we can see it right here on the symmetry surface. So we'll go symmetry one, and then if you click on the second one, it loses it, so make sure you control click to get both surfaces on the symmetry there. All right, so I got symmetry volume one, symmetry volume four, and click OK. All right, so we got uh, so we have that. We'll leave it the uh, variable as pressure, and we'll change it to look at the, just the local pressure. So the local pressure on this surface. That's what we want to look at, and then go ahead and click apply. Sorry, it's kind of can't see the top there, bottom. And then click apply down here in the bottom left, and apply your colors. On that surface. So right, what we expect at the stagnation point, we have high pressure, right, right here at the tip of the probe, and also where the probe uh, shaft that's holding it is going to be in the way of the flow, and that's going to crank up uh, the pressure there as well. All right, and you can dig around in here, look at uh, where you can put in vectors, all right, for velocity and other different things that uh, CFD Post has to offer. 
But that's the uh, exposure I wanted to give you to uh, Fluent in ANSYS. And the one thing I'd like you to do for homework, since I don't have a handout for you, I'd like you to model something in Fluent. All right, so if you want to make up, and not a straight pipe. Other than a straight pipe, I want you to model something using Fluent and provide me with the same, uh, with this kind of, with this pressure contour uh, of your, whatever you're modeling. So obviously I need to know, I'm going to need to know the conditions on it. All right, inlet outlet conditions. I'm going to need to know um, wall conditions and obviously the pressure contour. So make sure the legend's there. Otherwise, I have no idea what I'm looking at when I look at pretty colors. All right, so you can model what you want. So the reason I say what you want as opposed to do the same thing you just did for um, for today is because today you had this open cavity in the middle when that's where the fluent or that's where flow simulation meshed it up for you. Fluent needs the mesh domain as a solid when it goes into fluent. So you can model whatever, draw up whatever you want in SOLIDWORKS, bring it into ANSYS as a solid piece and you can just make that your internal flow. If you want to do something external like this probe, you're welcome to do that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, like, you know, make sure the thing's wide up. I just want you to try something, get your hands Get your hands in the program and uh, trying to use it.